Brought to you by Curious Moranland. So let's take a look at the next picture. See this molecule? It's going to pass through. This molecule can't get through this lipid bilayer, but it's going to get through the protein channel. And this one, well, it's not going to make it at all. <clears throat> so the, by the time we're done, we'll talk about all three of these. And what we're talking about is the selectively permeable cell membrane and how things can get through. So during this uh, short video, I'm going to show some animations and different aspects. So that's kind of the review of what you just saw. And here's some basic stuff about the cell membrane. Let's go ahead. I did another video on phospholipids, the like actual makeup of, of the phospholipid layer. Here's the tail, um, the head. Here's the tails. So within the phospholipid bilayer, so here's the top one, here's the bottom. It's a, We say it's a fluid mosaic. It's constantly moving around. And there's things that interact and allow things to pass through. Those are pro, called channel proteins. So something can go through here or it has to go through the channel protein or what happens is this whole thing will envelop and take it in. So here's one cell, here's another. You can see sometimes the channel proteins, the proteins in the cell membrane, um, will, we call them membrane proteins. Sometimes they allow for them to connect. Sometimes they allow for things to pass through as you're seeing here. We're going to talk about passive and active transport and look at some examples. So here's different aspects of things passing through. All these are using the protein channels. So sometimes they go all the way through. Sometimes they this protein channel goes all the way through. This one, it's in the in, embedded in the layer and it opens and closes. This one kind of rotates around. This, this is like a carrier protein. This is a protein pump and this is a channel protein. Quick review of osmosis and diffusion. Osmosis is going to be water, but the whole notion of all diffusion is going from a high to a low concentration. So passive, diffusion, high to a low concentration. Here's, there's a high concentration out here, there's a low, that's the direction it's going to go. Watch this. High concentration, low. High, low, it's going to keep moving until it is at equilibrium. Now, the process of it moving from that high to low can be measured, and we call that a concentration gradient. So osmosis, <clears throat> quick review, there's some terms that we always need to know when we talk about osmosis. Hypertonic, hypo, iso. I'll put a link in the description. I did another video just devoted to these different types of uh, scenarios and word problems. So remember, water goes in the direction of a hyper. Um, isotonic, hypertonic, Hypo. Um, again, I did another video on that, so I'm not going to go into that right now. So that's one of the aspects about movement across the membrane, which is water. So here's your isotonic situation. So water's going in and out at an equal rate. A hypertonic solution, water's going to leave the cell. A hypotonic solution, I mean, there's, there's uh, more stuff inside the cell. Water's going in. All right, now let's look at this. Transport across the membrane. You see, we look at a lot of pictures here with these membranes here and we see, but we gotta get a reference of the whole cell. So what I wanna do is go to a website that I already have loaded, all right, not that one. I'm gonna show you this one. Now, how, watch what happens when I scroll all the way down to the bottom just to get a view. Look at the cell, all right? Now, see the view? And this is the cell membrane and this is the channel protein. But I'm gonna hit refresh. Now watch what happens. We're zooming in. A lot of times when you see this picture, you forget that we're tilling, dealing with a whole cell. So they're slicing it in half, and now we're zooming in to see that cell. I'm going to do a follow-up video with this particular website where I go through and change, like, for example, I could, do, I could watch you look at concentrations, but I'll, we'll save that for later. Now, <clears throat> so this is the picture we looked at before. Back to the PowerPoint. So some things pass through, some things require channel, channels, and some things, uh, so these ones, you look, it can't, these pass through even. These require channels, right? Even water technically requires a protein channel, and it's called aquaporin. This is something we've learned in the last 10 years, but most people just say it goes through the cell membrane, which for our purposes, that will work for us when we talk about my um, osmosis. All right, take a second and look at these three scenarios. You notice this one takes, requires energy. These ones don't. This is going from high to low, high to low. 
high to low, just through the membrane. High to low through a protein channel, and this is through a protein channel, but there's more on this side than there is on this side. So what are we looking at? We're looking at passive transport, diffusion, facilitative diffusion, and active transport. This is a picture my students need to be able to know and label and understand what's going on. So active transport, as you see with this one, remember the animation, the animation right here, this one right here, it doesn't, that one doesn't get through, but we'll talk about how does it actually get through. <clears throat> so let's, well, we're going to finish with these two, um, endo and exocytosis, but I want to show one more thing about active transport, the one that requires energy, well all of them, but let's look at this, and this is something that I kind of have to do quickly. Now watch the next animation. It's going to show on the left and the right facilitated diffusion and active transport. Now watch. I'm going to do it twice. So look, see that flash of energy and it requires to go against the concentration gradient? Now you didn't, it started out with equal small number here on both sides and then went over. Now look, see there's more here and there is here. Here it's even. Now I want to show this again and see if you can watch what's going on. And this is activity I do in class. <clears throat> so if you look over here, now once they're equal, they're going to go back and forth. But here, it's going to, there's molecules in there, and they're going to keep going. I think I show that one last time. Look at the active trans transport. Two, three. It requires energy to open that. There's more in here, but it still keeps putting it in there. So we've got one last thing to talk about, and that is not this one, not this one. But how do you get the big one in? How do you get the big one in? And it's called endo and exocytosis. Endocytosis takes in large materials, so and exocytosis gets rid of them. So it's kind of the opposite. Well, let's, let's look at this one now. So this is exocytosis. These molecules, now remember the cell, remember those protein channels? They're probably about like that big. So they're too, these molecules are too big to pass through. This is your cell's means of getting in and out things, endo and exocytosis. So just a quick little thing here as we finish up. Here's that, it, it's actually, you need to understand vesicles. So here's Endocytosis, endocytosis, here's exocytosis. One last thing, there are two types. Take penocytosis is taking in liquids, and phagocytosis is taking in large objects. Here's actual, actual phagocytosis in action. This is an amoeba swallowing a paramecium. All right, so that, that pretty much goes through the three means of getting in, the two categories, active and passive, and then the variations within each one of those. So here's one last thing, big picture. Vesicle produced, goes from a Golgi, or the rough ER, to the Golgi. And then now watch this thing leave through exocytosis. That'd be like a secretory cell. Brought to you by Curious Marine Land. So the next video is going to be on uh, just some practice with those.